Hi and welcome to Unit 1, Topic 2, Video 6 on Vector Projections. So we're going to talk a bit about Vector Projections. There's going to be a little bit of new language that pops up here. Definitely worth listening and taking some notes as you go. And I'll be running through my OneNote in this video as well, so you can pause it at any time you'd like to. There's our Learning Goals and Success Criteria. So here's some pictures of people that I've drawn. So a Vector Projection is all about the length and the direction of a vector that's being projected from an original vector onto a new vector. So the way I like to think about it is here. Imagine a shadow. So I've got the simple case first, and that's me just standing vertically, and a shadow will project my image onto the ground, but usually it won't be the same size. Now because we're talking about projecting onto the ground, direction is already given. The only new piece of information we need to work out is the length or the magnitude of that new vector and that vector projection. Now it's called a vector projection because we're talking about a vector. Later in this video or the next video we'll talk about scalar projections or scalar resolutes and then we're not talking about direction anymore. So A in this diagram is the vector representing sunlight and it projects onto B and it projects my shadow vector, which is, in this case, OA, onto OB, and the direction is OB's direction, but the length will be whatever that length is. Now, the problem is, because that's pretty easy, it's all right angle trig, we can do that quite simply. The problem comes when we, ve we project a vector onto another vector that's not just that simple horizontal vector. And as you can see, if I'm walking up a ramp, my shadow now is not creating a right angle triangle necessarily. Now you might look at this diagram and go, the way I've drawn it, it looks kind of like I'm making a right angle triangle. What happens if the sunlight's coming from behind my head here, and I've got one of those, you know, long shadows, and this angle is now 85 degrees? Well, the game changes a little bit, and so that's what we need to deal with in our vector projection work. Now the good news is that there is a fairly simple formula to follow for this, and the bad news is there's four variants of that formula, only two of which are on your formula sheet. But you can get away with using those two. So vector projections, here's the technical. Let's say we're trying to project vector A onto vector B. Now vector B is quite a lot longer than A in this case, but it could be shorter. All that really matters about vector B is that it has a direction, and we know that direction. So here's the working to build our formulas. The formula that we're going to build towards is this one here. U, which is the vector projection, you can see it here, it represents a projection, is equal to A dot B over B dot B times vector B. Now, you'll know A and B almost certainly from the question. So, let's have a look at why. And we know, first of all, that U and B are parallel. So, U is equal to KB, and I'll fill in with a different colour. So we also know that A, vector A, is equal to UV. So we know we could, we could follow U and then V in my diagram, and that would represent the same movement as vector A. So therefore, because U equals KB, we've got A equals KB, and we can rearrange this to get vector V is equal to A minus KB. Now, um, we can also do a little multiple of v dot b and this is just basic arithmetic applied in a vector sense so v dot b we know is equal to zero and we know that because v dot b well v is perpendicular to b this is the way i've set up my vector projection here v is perpendicular to b i basically rotated that around to make that happen now we also know about v v is a minus KB and we know that's still equal to zero and now we can do what's called the distributive law and get A dot B minus KB dot B equals zero now the distributive law this one's a bit tricky and we need to be careful we can't just assume things you know uh, for example that two times x minus 7 is equal to 2 times x minus 2 times 7. That's a distributive law, and you know that works in the real number system. But we're dealing with vectors now. 
So what I've got on the side here in orange, and I'll flush it up and you can have a read through if you want. So pause the video now if you do want to read through it, is a proof of the distributive law by converting A, B, and C into their component forms in a two-dimensional space. So you can have a run through that proof. Okay, so we're going to um, continue our proof here of what our development of that formula. And so I've done that expansion using a distributive law, and now I'm going to subtract, so I've got negative k b dot b equals negative a dot b, and then therefore k is equal to negative a dot b over negative b dot b, if I divide through, and k of course um, can be multiplied by b, uh, but then what we get is negative, oh actually I don't need the negatives anymore, so it's a dot b over b dot b, and then that's multiplied by b. So keep in mind, over here this is k times b, k is just a scalar, b is a vector, and we can do that, it's a fairly simple calculation. Also, a dot b is a scalar, because it's a dot product, and b dot b is a scalar, so a scalar divided by a scalar is another scalar times b. So this is fine. But also remember that KB is equal to U. So we get U is equal to A dot B over B dot B times by B. And U is our vector projection. So there's our first formula. And um, that's the one I use quite a bit, to be honest. Working out dot products of vectors in, in generally in um, fairly simple uh, Cartesian form is nice and easy. Now, here's a result in the red box that's pretty important, and that is that x dot x is equal to um, x1 squared plus x2 squared. So just imagine that x is equal to x1, x2. We multiply that by itself, we'll do the dot product, we get that, which is equal to the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared, all squared. You know, what would make you do that step, I don't know, but this is where we're heading, because that's equal to the magnitude of x all squared. So x dot x is equal to the magnitude of x all squared, which is going to be an important result given that our formula currently has b dot b in it. So here we go. u equals a dot b over b dot b times b, which is equal to a dot b over b squared times b. Um, now, there are some alternates to this that involve b hat in particular but to be honest i'm going to leave it as this and let you deal with those if you want to they do appear in most textbooks um, these two will pretty much cover all bases so that's the end of this video six in the next video we'll talk about the scalar resolute and we'll do a couple of examples all the best